We welcome you back to High Heat, and I am pleased to be joined now by MLB Chief Development Officer Tony Regans. And Tony is a very busy man this week and this upcoming weekend, a lot going on. And Tony, thank you so much for being with us from Vero Beach, Florida. And I want to talk to you first about this breakthrough series. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. Yeah, we're down here in Vero um, at Jackie Robinson Training Complex. We have about 75 uh, mostly African-American ball players here at uh, the training camp with a bunch of former major league coaches as instructors and they're uh, basically getting a, a a quick version of spring training over the, the course of about four days here in Vero and uh, playing some baseball games but actually just left the baseball diamond a, a few moments ago and they're out there working hard so it's um it's an exciting time because the talent level that that I'm seeing and and, and has been around over the last few days um, is really exciting and these kids are going to play at the next level whether it be college or pro ball um, they're going to play at the next level and Tony what an opportunity for these young men there's 80 different students participating 16 states DC as well as Canada but they're getting some instruction from former big league players some insight some instruction some direction how how much of a competitive advantage do these young men have just being at the breakthrough series with you right now yeah, you know, those are the type of opportunities that you can't just, you know, you can't buy. I mean, some of the insights that guys like Ken Griffey Sr. or or Latroy Hawkins or Darren Oliver or Marquise Grissom and Luke Collier and, and all of the rest that uh, they share on a daily basis. Mike Sosha, I was out with Mike this morning at early work and, and just the attention to detail that he's be, he's able to communicate to these young players and they're getting this type of instruction at this age, you can't buy it. And for those young players to have a chance to to get that type of instruction, to have the, the ability to ask questions and, and feel comfortable asking questions, it just gives them a leg up on the competition. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do, give these kids the opportunity to succeed and be the best player that they can be. And not only that, the best person that they can be. And this is something that people can relate to because there are some big leaguers right now, Tony, that have gone through this breakthrough series. And you're talking about Key Brian Hayes, Akil Badu, Alec Thomas, Devin Williams, Josiah Gray, just to name a few. So kids, I would imagine that are participating in this know that the opportunity is definitely out there and they must be special if, if they're in this series to begin with. Yeah, I think that they start to see, you know, the attendees that are here to now start to see, you know, guys on the big leagues or at the big league level playing and understand that they have been in their shoes. They've been a part of the Breakthrough Series and other MLB uh, programs. And a lot of the guys have actually played with uh, some of the guys that are going to be in the draft and are projected to go in the first round. So it becomes tangible. It's something that, that's attainable. It's something that they believe that they can do. And it's all about opportunity, and they're here uh, getting that opportunity. And, you know, I, I'm just grateful that Major League Baseball is so supportive, you know, Commissioner Manfred um, really providing the resources for us to continue to do this year over year. And the Breakthrough Series was um, from Tuesday through today, but you're not done because we have Play Ball Weekend, and there's so many activities going on. All 30 clubs, 120 minor league teams participating. Tell us more about this fun weekend event. Yeah, I mean, play ball weekend is, I mean, this is the first time that we've had all 120 minor league clubs, all 30 clubs um, activating, and then an activation on seven continents. This is the first time that we've ever been able to do this. And, you know, I'm really excited because this is an opportunity for us to showcase our game over the course of this weekend at the community level. You know, it doesn't cost anything to, uh, to run these events. Kids have the opportunity to go in and play baseball, be engaged, have fun, just enjoy our sport over the course of the next couple of days. And um, again, I think the most important thing is like the interaction, you know, the fun that the kids will have. And then most importantly, you know, it's free. There's no charge. So you're not, you know, spending a lot of money to go out and engage in our sport. Seven continents participating. Tony, how are we playing baseball in, in, on Antarctica? Tell me more about that. I knew you were going to ask that. That's the first question that comes out of everybody's mouth. How are you going to get it done in Antarctica? Uh, you know, uh, uh, one of our team members, Bennett Shields, worked really, really hard on on making that happen. And they've been actually engaged um, 
at the military base down there. And so they're going to do a small iteration of, of, of play ball, but they're excited to be a part of it. And we're going to try to grab footage of that, that interaction so, uh, so that we can validate, you know, Antarctica as a play ball participant. <laughs> That's awesome. I love to see it. Baseball is important all over the globe. That's going to be awesome to see. And, you know, you took on this position, Tony, back uh, in, in August of 2020. What was it about making sure that you could oversee youth baseball and just the development both domestically and internationally that uh, appealed to you? You know, I've always been involved with young people. Um, I'm, I'm on the board of the board of directors of Boys and Girls Club nationally. I'm I've just always been in, engaged and involved in development. And to be able to create opportunities for, for those that, that may not have the opportunity is really appealing to me. I was the kind of kid at, that wasn't really aware of the type of opportunities that were available in our game. And just to be able to convey that, communicate that to, to young people, both boys and girls, that you know, there's a place for you in our game, whether you on the field or in a front office or, or behind the scenes, there's a place for you. You just have to have the opportunity to, to reach for your goals and, and strive to be the best and get the work done. And that's what, uh, what happened to me. And if I'm able to share that and my story to, to others and motivate them to be all that they can be and, and really be attracted to our game, you know, that's what it's all about. So I'm passionate about it. The people that I work with, you know, my team uh, back at the league office, we're very, very passionate about it. We want to make the game as, as good as we can and creating opportunities for young people are, uh, you know, it's the cornerstone of what we do. As global and as accessible as we can as well. And Tony, many people may not know that prior to this position that you have at the commissioner's office, that you were very much uh, involved in, you know, the GM system with the Los Angeles Angels there in Anaheim, and also, of course, as their farm director. And you were the fourth African American general manager in Major League Baseball history. Tell me more about that position for you and how important it is for people, as you just mentioned, um, to, to see representation that, that anybody can do it yeah my my journey started you know back in 1991 as an intern with the angels and you know i was fortunate enough to to have opportunities and have great mentors along the way that that really gave me a chance to to rise throughout the organization be a farm director um, become the general manager and um you know i didn't take those roles lightly um, it was something that i was getting very very passionate about i, I wanted the opportunity um, was able to have that opportunity to see how baseball worked at that level. And then, you, you know, you do the best that you can do on a daily basis. And that's what I tried to do. I tried to work hard um, and, and I gave my best every single day. And, you know, you never know what, what happens after that. But for me, the commissioner, commissioner's office came knocking and, um, you know, it, we were starting a new, new, new division that had never really been started before and really been tapped into. Commissioner Manfred was really you know, focused on, on young people and, and getting them engaged in the game. And, um, you know, I, I was able to, to, to come on board at the commissioner's office. But like you said, long time um, in the game. It's a, when I think about it, 30 years, 31 years is a long time. And, and I've been uh, fortunate to be able to stick around and, and give back. And this is what I'm doing today, you know, sharing what I've been able to accomplish uh, with young people and even, you know, some of the coaches that we have on our staff, giving them an opportunity to to grow in the game. And, and, and you know, some have aspirations to to coach at a higher level. So we're trying to do all of that, just create opportunity, making sure that they know that there is a place for them in our game. And um, I think that that's that's crucial because a lot of times you're not aware. I was one of those persons that didn't know that there was a place for me and, and it turned out for me and it can turn out for others. All right, 2009, you uh, draft Mike Trout. Do you do it all over again? <laughs> Absolutely. Don't even think uh, <laughs> think about it. I mean, obviously, back then in 2009, I didn't know he was going to be the best player in the world, but um, obviously he's shown that. And uh, tremendous, <laughs> tremendous player. I always say this about Mike, though. He's a better person than he is a player. And um, yeah. if you can if you can be the best player in the world and be the best play person in the world, then you're doing something. He's a great kid, yeah, great family. No question and, you know, about it. We just it. wish him the best. Yeah, no question about it. You signed a good one. Tony Regans, uh, the chief baseball development officer for Major League Baseball. Thank you so much for being with us. Have a great weekend. All right. Thanks for having me. Take care.